Miami man is being accused of fraud after acquiring nearly $4 million in federal loan money. 29-year-old David T. Hines was arrested after getting millions of loan money designated to help businesses during the pandemic. I am fuming. Do you see steam I literally coming see out of my ears? Erica, you're lucky you're at home. Ooh. Yes, court documents show that Hines allegedly spent the money on dating websites, jewelry, Miami Beach resorts. He also dropped more than $300,000 on a new Lamborghini. My God, if I could throw this pen through throw, the let monitor it go. Let it into go. his home, I would. This is coming from a small business. How are you feeling right now, Sam? Get it out. I'm angry. My husband and I have a small business, and I'm just going to use myself as an example because let me tell you, we have it much better than the majority of, of families out there and small businesses who are affected by COVID. It, okay, and I understand that and I accept and understand my privilege. However, COVID really, really destroyed, I would say, the majority of our company. Luckily, we are slowly rebuilding this company that we've poured the last 10 years of our blood, sweat, and tears into. Me as a waitress, my husband taking odd jobs literally for years until I got a steady job like this. So there's been so much effort. And then during COVID, we needed a lot of those government funds to help us move forward. The government funds were gone. We never got any of those government funds. We did everything possible to get it. And people like him took it away from businesses like us and other small businesses, viewers who are watching right now, who I'm sure could have used that money much more than dude in a Lamborghini. Wow. I just don't, Erica, I know a lot of people. I'm from Ohio. I went to school in Mississippi. I went to school in Providence, Rhode Island. I lived in Florida. I lived in California. I lived in New York. I know a lot of people. I don't know one single person that has received money. Not one person. And for you, Sam, you're, you're, I, I understand you're coding this and, and couching it in like, I'm lucky to have this job. No, Sam, you work your butt off. I've been next to you. I hear you on the phone. You're constantly working. I've gone to basketball games with your husband and he's got to be up in three hours because he's got to be up when the Chinese market's open over there. So he's up at four o'clock every day. I've seen you guys work your tail off for this and it's not fair. I don't, we, Erica, where's the money? Why do we, is, are they just, how did this goofball, he's not even anybody. Wait, can you explain, Erica? You can explain everything else. I, <laughs> I'll try to explain. I don't have the answers, but I will say this. I was very strong in my stance on people making sure that the government was working for them. Private citizens, do not be ashamed to utilize your money in terms of unemployment benefits. Do not be ashamed to go after PPP. A lot of small businesses didn't even in the beginning, didn't even apply because the narrative has always been out there that you don't use the government because that's for people who are destitute. Hmm. That's desperate measures. Yet you have people who are rich who just stay rich because they utilize every single loophole in the system. Right. We have to take away the stigma from people who actually need this money. This is not charity. It is not something to be ashamed of. And if it is something to be ashamed of, then why are millionaires and billionaires not ashamed to take it when they can survive without it? Preach. So ask yourself that question every single time. Propaganda is real and it's meant to keep people who need the assistance unassisted and it's disgusting and I'm gonna continue to say it and you can call me welfare queen you can call me whatever you want to call me but you're gonna call me right because I'm telling you right now that's what it's all about amen queen a Virginia Beach business owner facing federal charges he is accused of taking COVID relief money and spending it on himself when it was supposed to be used for his business. So reporter Margaret Cavanaugh checked in with the man's attorney along with an economic expert about this issue of fraud. 39-year-old Scott Suber of Virginia Beach is facing one count of bank fraud. He owns the business Debris or Not Debris Business Preservation. His lawyer says he admits to taking money from the Paycheck Protection Program and using it for his own personal benefit. He says he put his trust into the wrong people when filling out the loan application, takes full responsibility, and plans to plead guilty. He's made some bad decisions about a lot of things that he's got to take responsibility for. We don't dispute that piece of it. What's important now for his case is to try and make things right 
And I think that's what he's trying to do now. Court documents state that he got approved for a $350,000 loan. His application should have never been approved. It really shouldn't have. The money was supposed to be used for payroll, his lease and utilities, but instead he made large cash withdrawals and spent the money on travel to Las Vegas, according to documents. Through this loan program, Congress awarded hundreds of billions of dollars in forgivable loans to small businesses for the purpose of helping them through the pandemic. Economics expert and professor at ODU, Bob McNabb, says we will see more fraud cases if more resources are put into investigating them, but it's unclear how big of a problem this is. We don't know the true extent of fraud. We just know that when you put a large pot of money out there, some people just can't resist the temptation to say, I'm going to grab a portion of it, even if they don't legally deserve it. He says fraud takes money from businesses that need it. Unfortunately, when you have very large programs trying to push a lot of money out the door, in very quick fashion, some people are going to take advantage of that. He says problems with fraud will call for tighter restrictions in the future. We need to stimulate the economy to prevent further tragedy in an economic sense, but also to steward the funds to the best of our ability to make sure that the taxpayers are confident that the government is spending the funds to the best of their ability making sure the money is being spent the way it was intended. A Lompoc business owner is warning other small businesses tonight after nearly getting caught up in a Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loan scam. KSBY's Melissa Newman joins us in the studio with tips for protecting yourself from possibly having to pay back tens of thousands of dollars. Last week, Joseph Benton received a call that immediately put him on edge. The Small Business Administration saying someone had filed a PPP loan in his name. Tonight, he shared with me the steps he took to protect his credit and ways to know if the Small Business Administration is actually trying to contact you. Business has been booming the last year for Joseph Benton. Since the pandemic started, I've been busier than ever. Benton hosts virtual training, so he never had to close down. The kind of work that I do is in much greater demand. Uh, so that's kind of how this whole issue came up with uh, the SBA contacting me. He says he was caught off guard last week when he received a call from the Small Business Administration with concerns about a PPP loan filed in his name. The first thing that I said was, no, 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 I didn't apply for a loan. And so... They said, well, that's good uh, because it wouldn't have gone through anyway because you have frozen your credit. Don Golick, director of the Fresno District Office for the Small Business Administration, says the SBA will more likely contact you by email than over the phone. Any communication from SBA that's legitimate will come from an email address that ends in at SBA.gov and businesses can certainly reach out to our office if they're concerned about the legitimacy of any communication that they get. Benton says he was able to fix the issue with the SBA and now suggests other business owners consider freezing their credit as well. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to try to um, get that information erased from your credit report that you had taken money out and then having to deal with a debt that was suddenly you know, kind of heaped up on me, that, that would have been really hard to deal with. I'm so thankful that I froze my credit. Not everyone is as lucky that fraudulent activity gets picked up by the SBA before you notice it. The SBA says they take fraud very seriously and people who suspect they may be victims should reach out to the SBA office nearest to them, which for us on the Central Coast is the Fresno District Office. The federal program aimed at helping small businesses get back on their feet during the pandemic has reopened with $284 billion in new funding. But as I-Team reporter Brian New explains now, even with changes, many worry that the second round of PPP loans will be much like the first, plagued with fraud. Instead of going to small struggling businesses, investigators say millions of dollars from the first round of PPP loans were spent by alleged fraudsters on big houses, fancy cars, or sent overseas. The latest case of alleged fraud involves a man from the small town of Mott, Texas. 
According to court records, Samuel Yates applied for a $5 million federal loan, claiming his company had been impacted by the pandemic and he needed millions to pay the wages of his 412 employees. But in reality, according to court records, Yates's company has zero employees. Investigators say Yates copied a list of names off the Internet and claimed them as employees. He also forged tax documents. The first bank Yates applied to denied him a loan, but he applied again with another lender and was given more than a half million dollars in relief funds. Have there been enough changes? No, uh, but I do think Congress did try to address some issues. Uh Tim Stratton is with the Watchdog Group Project on Government Oversight. He says Congress has made sure the second round of PPP loans requires more detailed applications. There will also be more extensive audits, but Stratton says that's not enough. He says if the government, not just the lenders, would simply verify applications with IRS tax documents, billions of dollars in fraud could be prevented. It's just it was one small step that they could do um, that would really help verify that this is an actual business and the numbers that they're reporting you know, are consistent with previous years that they've already told the government. So that's, I think that's the easiest thing that you could do to really make sure that these loans go to real businesses. And had Yates' tax documents been checked ahead of time, it would have shown that his company had no employees, had generated no revenue, and had no record of operation prior to last year. A local businessman is at the center of a WRL investigation and now faces federal charges for COVID relief fraud. The charges come more than a year after we took our concerns to the U.S. Attorney's Office. WRL Investigates' Chris Levengood is here with an update, Chris. Jeff, following a tip, WRL Investigates cross-checked databases for the Paycheck Protection Program. We compared names, owners, and addresses of local businesses that receive loans. That work turned up a web of companies that cashed in on $1.5 million in disaster loans, most of which were completely forgiven. Our research only turned up a physical location for just one company, the Insurance Centers in Garner. We went there last spring looking for the owner to ask him about our our findings and never received a response. Today, that owner, Wilson Oliveira, is in federal custody. U.S. Marshals arrested him. A viewer sent this photo only to WREL. It shows Oliveira being led away in handcuffs. The newly unsealed indictment reflects our findings and confirms what we suspected. Oliveira was using shell companies to get loans. Investigators found Oliveira filed false tax returns in his loan applications. He also submitted false quarterly reports the state's unemployment office never received, as well as false payroll records to convince banks to approve his loans. Oliveira faces nine counts of wire fraud. He'll be in jail until a more thorough detention hearing next week, where a judge will decide if Oliveira can go free until his trial. And WRL is interviewing U.S. Attorney Michael Easley about this story. Look for that in our later newscasts on WRL today. A local businessman is at the center of a WRL investigation and now faces federal charges for COVID relief fraud. The charges come more than a year after we took our concerns to the U.S. Attorney's Office. WRL Investigates' Chris Levengood is here with an update, Chris. Jeff, following a tip, WRL Investigates cross-checked databases for the Paycheck Protection Program. We compared names, owners, and addresses of local businesses that receive loans. That work turned up a web of companies that cashed in on $1.5 million in disaster loans, most of which were completely forgiven. Our research only turned up a physical location for just one company, the Insurance Centers in Garner. We went there last spring looking for the owner to ask him about our findings and never received a response. Today, that owner, Wilson Oliveira, is in federal custody. U.S. Marshals arrested him. A viewer sent this photo only to WREL. It shows Oliveira being led away in handcuffs. The newly unsealed indictment reflects our findings and confirms what we suspected. Oliveira was using shell companies to get loans. Investigators found Oliveira filed false tax returns in his loan applications. He also submitted false quarterly reports the state's unemployment office never received, as well as false payroll records to convince banks to approve his loans. Oliveira faces nine counts of wire fraud. He'll be in jail until a more thorough detention hearing next week, where a judge will decide if Oliveira can go free until his trial. And WRL is interviewing U.S. Attorney Michael Easley about this story. Look for that in our later newscasts on WRL Today.